From CPRI and the CPRI Knowledge Hub, this is Research Minutes, a weekly look at new and important research in education. Today, we look at education in a post-COVID world, and a new survey highlighting some lingering concerns and some promising approaches used in districts across the U.S. They had teachers make contact with every single student at least once a week. And that approach, according to this district, helped them learn some of the specific needs that students had. And it also helped them keep their engagement high. We welcome Dia Jackson, senior researcher with the American Institutes for Research and co-author of a brief highlighting early results from a nationwide survey of district and charter school network leaders. Jackson discusses some effective strategies used in schools this spring and some commonly reported concerns for districts as we move into the fall. Districts really were concerned with addressing the needs of their historically underserved students. That really rose to the top as the most pressing need for districts. That's right now on Research Minutes. Hello and welcome to Research Minutes. I'm Keith Umeller, Managing Editor of the CPRI Knowledge Hub. Today, I have the sincere pleasure of welcoming Dia Jackson. She's a senior researcher with the American Institutes for Research, or AIR. Uh, thanks so much for joining us, Dia. Great. Thanks for having me. So today we're discussing a new AIR brief, which you co-authored with Mike Garrett, um, and it's titled Voices of School District Leaders, National Survey of Public Education's Response to COVID-19. Uh, it's now available at AIR.org, and it gives us an early look at responses to what's an ongoing survey of educational leaders in more than 2,500 school districts and 250 charter management organizations across the country. Uh, to start, could you just give a quick overview of this survey itself? Um, how is it being conducted, and, and what is your team hoping to learn? Sure. So our survey is a nationwide survey of school districts. And our goal is to really gain information about how they handled school closures as a result of the pandemic. So we know that across the country, uh, millions of students were um, shifted to online learning and uh, schools were really left in a, a very difficult position to try to support these students and provide leadership and support for students and families. So our goal with the survey is to determine what changes districts made how they address those most pressing needs and uh, what they were able to learn during that time. So our survey is administered across 2,536 districts and 260 charter management organizations. And that really is one of the ways that it differs from other surveys and uh, research efforts that are going on now around COVID and families responding to instruction. So our sample will allow us to report by district size, by poverty, by locale and region for 12 states. So we oversampled in 12 states. And the other differentiator of our survey is that it asks detailed questions, uh, some open-ended questions about the innovative approaches that districts are taking. So we really wanted to know how they're addressing these issues and and what are some of the emerging innovations that are coming out of this time? Uh, so our survey was launched on May 20th. It will remain open through mid-August. Uh, and it's a mixed method study. So we have Likert type questions as well as uh, a number of open-ended questions. Uh, and our survey is being administered by our partner, uh, NORC, at the University of Chicago. So uh, we've engaged in that partnership to really look at these six areas uh, within what's happening as a response to COVID. So the six topics that we're really looking at are the timing of school closures due to COVID, uh, the distance learning approaches and challenges that districts are facing, how are they supporting students with disabilities and English learners, uh, district policies and requirements such as grading and graduation, staffing and human resources, and uh, the health, well-being, and safety of students. So the brief that uh, we wanted to discuss today actually focuses on a set of open-ended questions that um, your team has been posing to education leaders as a part of this much broader survey. Um, could you walk us through what those questions are and why you felt it was important to ask open-ended questions um, in your work here? Sure. Uh, we had three 
open-ended questions um, that we talked about in the qualitative brief. So the three questions were, as a district or organization, what are the most pressing challenges or concerns you're facing in meeting the needs of students you serve? The second question is, what promising approaches or practices are emerging to meet the needs of students and families? And the third question is, on which topics related to serving students during COVID-19 pandemic would you most like to exchange ideas with other school districts across the country? So uh, based on these questions, we really are looking for innovative approaches. Uh, and in the long term, we plan to link these survey results to student outcome data to examine associations between practices during the pandemic and subsequent trajectories. So we really value hearing from the field on how, they're, uh, how they addressed these challenges uh, immediately after the school closures and then how they are continuing to provide support for students. Uh, and we really think that this uh, mixed method approach will really provide some, some rich information for us in the field. So we now have some early results from those questions. And I do want to stress that because these are early results, we should be careful about how we interpret responses at this point. But it seems that there, there are some trends that are worth discussing now. Um, to start, I think many school leaders, policymakers, and even instructors might be interested in some of the post-COVID approaches and practices that school leaders have found promising. Sure. So from those preliminary open-ended responses, we saw four themes emerge, and those themes were supporting social-emotional needs. Districts responded that that was one of their top priorities. Uh, prioritizing equity also arose as one of the district's largest concerns. Building on prior efforts uh, was a really common uh, sentiment among districts and then cultivating collaboration. So uh, we were able to see that districts really were concerned with addressing the needs of their historically underserved students. That really rose to the top as the most pressing need for districts. Uh, the impact of school closures um, really highlighted the deep existing inequities that schools already face. So uh, when asked what is one topic that, that they wanted to share or that districts wanted to share with others, they really were concerned about equity. How do we serve our students within a system that is we already know has a number of inequities built into it? They really, uh, one district stated that affirming the diversity of our students and increasing achievement to remove barriers for, from our students uh, was their number one concern. Another district, for example, remarked that their main concern was around providing access to specific groups of students who were more significantly impacted by COVID and school closures, such as English learners and students with disabilities and economically disadvantaged students in their district. So the concerns around equity range from students having access to technology uh, to concerns about their physical and emotional well-being of students and families. We also saw a number of innovative approaches rising to the top. So one district stated that they were extending Wi-Fi uh, availability to students by providing Wi-Fi in the parking lot. Um, so they were able to extend their Wi-Fi so that students and families could come to the school parking lot and it wasn't limited just to the school building. Another district shared that they attempted um, hotspot technology to rural families through buses and other means to provide internet access that way. And then to address the socio social emotional needs of students, districts really were very innovative in this area. Uh, so one district stated that their counselors used an app that allowed students to use their name uh, or be anonymous when they wanted to call in for support. They also used an app to motivate students. So another district had a strategy called Every Kid Every Week. So they had teachers make contact with every single student at least once a week. Uh, if they didn't contact that student digitally, then they would call them. If they didn't take a phone call, uh, then they were showed up at the student's house. And that approach, uh, according to this district, helped them learn some of the specific needs that students had. And it also helped them keep their engagement high among students. So that was another real 
concern for districts was how do we keep our students engaged and how do we provide them with the social emotional support that they may need. Another area uh, that really rose to the top is in a real concern for districts, but also a positive was cultivating community. So districts were able to engage in activities such as a quarantine art challenge, where they were able to have students uh, submit their different um, pieces of art and then have a drawing on Facebook Live and virtual town halls. Uh, so that was one way that they were able to engage with students and families. And then the collaboration between districts and the community was really one of the hallmarks of the ways that districts were able to address these challenges. So districts stated that they were really able to close the gap with families by providing uh, virtual meeting spaces and collaborating with local nonprofits to work together to really address the basic needs of students and families. One district stated that many different agencies donated toward their food program. Uh, they were able to give gallons of milk, dozens of eggs, bricks of cheese, as well as normal meals because the community members were donating them. So that served as a way to provide support to their uh, schools and their school community, as well as the farming community in that particular locale. So that turned out to be a real win for them, uh, being able to collaborate with the community uh, to support the families and their specific needs. So we're seeing a lot of really interesting approaches rise from this time. It's interesting and it's certainly heartening to see that many districts seem to be spending a great deal of energy focusing on student equity and student access during such a challenging time. Um, and I understand you're now finishing up some analysis on how districts have been addressing the needs of students with disabilities as well. Is there anything you can share with us there? Sure, yeah, we are finding uh, some really interesting approaches and really what we're seeing from these initial results is that addressing the needs of students with disabilities is the most challenging area for districts. By and large, that has uh, really been shown as one of the areas that districts are, are having a hard time managing. Um, so they are trying to, to address the requirements of the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act, uh, while also managing the pandemic and the change among all of their students. So when we asked districts about this, a number of uh, districts responded that they were able to provide differentiated learning packets for students. So we saw uh, through all of our responses that the special education teachers really were able to bridge the gap for these students. We saw a number of responses where districts said that uh, their special education teachers sent materials home, uh, they sent toys and manipulatives that students would need to provide them with not only academic support, but to really help provide the routine that students had that we know is so important for students with disabilities. We also saw that districts were able to provide support through use of their paraprofessionals to provide some of that instruction for students. Uh, so a number of districts leveraged their paraprofessionals to really individualize instruction for students with disabilities. Uh, we also saw that a number of districts were able to collaborate across departments and, and use YouTube uh, for some of their instruction and some other recorded videos to really address the needs of students with disabilities. Uh, and then we saw that one of the most popular areas that was used was telemedicine and teletherapy for students with disabilities. Uh, so telemedicine was used for counseling sessions uh, or as a way to connect with community agencies, uh, connect students with those agencies and connect with families. So those are some of the, the really interesting approaches that we're seeing across a number of our uh, districts. So finally, uh, your team included an open-ended question on the survey regarding topics for idea exchange or sharing of information among districts and among CMOs. Um, have you learned anything there yet? I, I think those responses might be especially poignant as we move more fully into, into this next school year. Yeah, so we're seeing a lot of uh, interesting responses from districts around ideas that they want to exchange with others. So there were a number of uh, challenges that 
you know, we've already discussed so challenges around equity, around addressing the needs of students with disabilities and around English learners. Those were really some of the top topics that uh, districts expressed they wanted to exchange ideas around. We also are seeing questions or ideas around uh, how do we provide appropriate expectations for teachers and students in this digital environment? How do we address grading and authentic assessment for students, uh, especially for students with disabilities during this time? Districts also ask questions around how do schools successfully address the lack of student engagement with distance learning? So how do we make sure that students are engaged when they're online? And how do we make sure to engage those students who maybe have not uh, been online, who we haven't been able to have a touch point with? We also saw questions around how do we keep our teachers healthy? How do we keep our teachers from burning out? How do we make sure that we are providing them with effective professional development uh, that really gives them the support that they need and the knowledge and skills that they need to be effective instructors during this time? So these were some of the, the big areas that have come up in these initial responses uh, that districts are really interested in, in exchanging ideas with other districts around. Well. This is incredibly intriguing and certainly very timely work. And I should remind listeners that AIR will be completing the survey in mid-August and rolling out their findings throughout the 2020-21 school year. You can find all their briefs and more, um, including the early results that we discussed here today at AIR.org. Dia Jackson, it's been an absolute pleasure speaking with you today. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thanks for listening to this week's Research Minutes, presented by the CPRI Knowledge Hub. For more episodes or to subscribe to the series, you can find us at researchminutes.org. To share thoughts on today's episode or to suggest a future topic, you can find us on Twitter at CPRI Hub. That's C-P-R-E Hub.